Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where we're going to be creating a theme selector using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. All right, so um, this solution right here is going to be purely on the client side. So there's going to be no need for any sort of server side technology such as Express, PHP, uh, Django, whatever it might be. So it's going to be purely on the client side. All right. Now, uh, this right here is going to be the finished result. As we can see, it's a fairly simple website here with a drop down on the top. And if I was to choose a theme, for example, the dark theme, it's going to instantly change the theme of the whole website. Now, it's also going to be saving this uh, theme to uh, local storage on the client side browser, which means if I was to refresh the page here, it's going to keep that saved theme. So we're going to be building this right here from scratch. But first, today's video is sponsored by Fusion Charts. Fusion Charts is a feature packed library full of responsive and interactive charts, graphs and gauges, making it a perfect fit for your next dashboard or data visualization project. Let me show you how easy it is to create a bar chart using Fusion Charts. To install, you can use NPM or you can paste in the HTML using Fusion Charts CDN. To render a chart using Fusion Charts, we can create a new chart container in the HTML. We can now head inside the JavaScript below and create a new instance of Fusion Charts passing through all of the properties and options, including the charts type. We can then pass through the data itself and then lastly call the render method and we're good to go. And as we can see, it was that easy to create a bar chart using Fusion charts. You can also change your theme. I can paste in the fusion theme right there and then provide the theme as being fusion. Then if I go back in the browser, we're going to get this beautiful theme right here. It also integrates nicely with your favorite JavaScript framework such as React, Angular or Vue. So go to fusioncharts.com or click on the link in the description below to begin your free trial today. Okay, so how do we go about creating this right here from scratch, right? So if we go inside this tab right here, we can see we've got basically the exact same website without the drop down at the top. And of course, without any of the themes applied, right? So going inside the text editor right here, this currently looks like this. As we can see, it's a simple index HTML with a linked CSS style sheet. So I'm going to assume you guys already have some some sort of CSS style sheet linked up to your website. Um, if you don't, you can simply go ahead and create this file um, and then of course link it up right here with the you know CSS link um, tag right there. And we can see this currently looks like this. So just simple, uh, you know, global styles for your website. All right, so the first step here is actually going to be to define um, the two uh, theme files, which of course represent a default light theme and a dark theme. And of course, you guys can pick as many themes as you want to add to your website. So up here inside the CSS directory, I'll make a new folder called themes. Okay. Then inside here, make a new file called default.css and a second file. Uh, called dark.css. So the way it's going to work is basically within these two theme CSS files, there's going to be a bunch of variables which get defined. Um, and then the common CSS, you know, file or your main CSS style sheet is going to read those variables which are being defined. And then of course, you know, using them in the actual styling. Okay, so an example variable might be the background color or the primary text color. Okay, so to define these variables here, we can make a new rule set here with colon root just like this. And we can define some variables inside here. So just so you guys know, uh, the root basically just means that any or this sort of applies to any uh, HTML element. So anywhere in your CSS file, you can gain access to these variables. All right. So in this case here, let's define a new variable called uh, primary background color. Okay. Make this set to something like uh, just a very light gray for the default light theme. Okay. So now using the double dash at the front, this just means it's going to be a variable. And this also has nothing to do with the CSS property called background dash color. It's totally separate. Okay. 
let's make a second variable here called primary text color equal to a very dark gray. Okay, so now we have these two variables here defined, uh, which you know sort of represent the theme, the default theme. We can now copy all of this stuff right here and paste it inside the dark.css file. Also, if you guys don't have the same uh, directory structure here, I do recommend that you actually try and follow this directory structure with the CSS folder, then of course the themes folder, but if not, just make sure you know where you keep these files, all right? So anyway, for the dark theme, we can simply swap over these colors. So I'll grab the light color for the text color and the dark color for the background color, just like that. Cool, so now let's make use of these uh, variables inside the common or global CSS file. So going inside the body right up here, let's define a new property called background-color, then make this set to using var, then passing through here, primary background color just like that. And basically, whatever theme the user has chosen, it's going to grab that variable from that respective, you know, theme file, default or dark, okay? Let's also make a new property here, color, set to the variable for primary text color, just like that. Okay, so now let's head back inside the index.html and we're going to be linking up the default CSS style sheet for that theme. Okay, so right down here, let's copy this line and make this go to themes, then of course, default.css. If I was to save this right here, go back in the browser, we're gonna get something like this. As we can see, that very light gray background has been applied. Just to further prove my point, I might just go back inside here and make the background color something like a blue. Um, just to test it out, save it back in the browser. We can see now definitely, um, you know, that CSS style sheet is being read and the variable is being picked up. Okay, so now it's going to be as simple as, you know, allowing our JavaScript code to uh, update this link tag right here, just simply updating the href to point to a different theme file and it's going to use those variables instead. So, uh, how do we how do we use JavaScript to, of course, update this link href attribute? Well, firstly, I'm going to need to define a new uh, ID on this link tag. We can call this ID something like uh, let's just call it uh, style sheets link. Okay. So, or well, actually, let's let's call it theme uh, theme style sheet link. All right. Cool, so now we're gonna be grabbing onto this link tag in the JavaScript to update that href based on the selected theme, okay? So, dropping right down here below the, uh, or above the horizontal rule tag, let's make a new select dropdown just like this and give this an ID of simply uh, style sheet or let's just call this theme select, okay? Just like that. And then dropping down here, let's define the two options for default and dark. So we can say option with a value of default and a text of default and the same thing for the dark and then of course dark down here. Now, it's very important that your value, okay, your value attribute um, uh, matches up with the CSS uh, style sheet name. So if you got default in lowercase for your CSS file, they need to match up, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Cool, so dropping down below the end, uh, you know, before the uh, closing body tag, let's create a new script tag right up here and we're gonna be doing a bit of JavaScript. So the first step here is gonna be to define a new function which is going to initialize the theme selector functionality. So we can make a new function here called init theme selector just like that. And then we're gonna be calling this function as soon as the page loads up. So the purpose of this function here is just to separate all of our code, which relates to the theme selection from everything else on the page. So just keep everything in one place for the theme selector. All right, so jumping inside this function, the first step here is gonna to be to define a couple of constants. So the first constant here is gonna be a reference to our theme selector dropdown menu. So we can say right here, uh, const theme select equal to document.getElementById, then passing through here, theme select just like that. All right, and a second constant here, 
uh, called uh, Theme Style Sheet Link, just like that. And of course, the ID is going to be Theme Style Sheet Link. So now we have access to both our drop down and the link tag in the JavaScript code. All right, so I might just stop here, go back in the browser to see what we're actually sort of up to. So we can see here, of course, the drop down exists, but there is no uh, text. So let's go back and just say something like, uh, let's just do something like choose a theme. Okay, back in the browser, a bit better like that. All right, so now let's let's get this code to work and actually update that theme. Okay, so going back inside here. Now uh, the second step is going to be to define a function called activate theme. Okay, so this function inside here is going to take through uh, essentially the name of your theme. So once again, this parameter needs to match your theme CSS file. So we'll say here something like theme name. Okay, then inside here, we'll just say theme style sheet link dot set attribute and set the attribute to be the or set the set the href attribute to be the new path to that new CSS theme file. So using the back ticks uh, on your keyboard near the one key, uh, we're going to have access to JavaScript template strings, which means we can say something like CSS forward slash themes, and then we can use dollar sign then curly braces to simply then say uh, theme name just like that. Then say dot CSS to complete that path. So of course now it's either going to be, you know, default.css or of course dark.css. Uh, okay, cool. We have this function defined. We can now drop it down here and we can do a few more things. So we're going to be saying theme select dot add event listener. And we're going to say when the user changes uh, the value in that drop down, we're going to run this function here. Okay. Now this function is going to simply call activate theme and it's going to pass through here the current selected value. So it's going to be theme select dot value. Okay. So simply just grabbing uh, the value attribute for whatever, you know, drop down item was selected. So back in the browser now, if I was to choose the theme of dark, it's going to update that, you know, uh, that link tag right here to of course go to dark.css. If I make it default, it now goes to default.css. So that's how the theme selector is going to work. Okay, now, how do we make this thing remember which theme we selected? Okay, so going back into the example from earlier, if you go into the application tab inside your developer tools in the browser, we can see here under local storage for your origin or your website, we have the key of theme with a value of dark. If I was to update the theme to be default, it's going to change that value right there. So this is very simple to implement and we're going to be doing that right now for this tab right here. So going back inside the code, let's just create a new constant here called current theme. Okay, so once again, this code here, you know, is going to run when the page first loads up. So the current theme is going to be local storage dot get item, then pass through here, theme. Okay, basically, this right here is going to grab your local storage value for the theme key. If it doesn't currently exist, so if it's the first time the user has changed their theme or the first time the user is going to your page, um, we're going to say a default of default. So if it can't find the previous, you know, selected theme, we're going to go to the default one right there. Then dropping down here below the add event listener, we're simply just going to say activate theme and we're going to activate the theme for the current theme. Okay, so now we're going to get that, you know, default theme or whatever theme the user has selected previously loading up uh, when the page first loads. Okay, alongside that, we're going to also need to update the select drop down to have that theme selected. Okay, so if I save this right here, right, I go back in the browser and I choose the theme of dark. Okay, then go inside the application tab 
In local storage, we currently have nothing because of course, we have, we're yet to actually save that theme. So let's just go back real quick and save the theme. So that's very simple. Uh, in the add event listener, we'll just say local storage dot set item and set the, uh, the key of theme to be theme select dot, dot, dot value, okay? Save this and go back in the browser. We're gonna select the theme of dark and now we can see it's gonna be saved right here value of dark. Now, if I refresh the page, it's going to it's going to stay as dark because of course it's reading that value, but unfortunately, the drop down still displays default. So to fix that, if I go back inside here, I'm going to simply say, you know, uh, theme select dot value is equal to current theme as well. I can save this and go back in the browser. On a refresh, we're going to get the dark uh, selected visibly inside that drop down. So there you go. That's how to create a theme selector using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you learned something, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.